If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. So, I mean, these are the high level uh, module what we are going to cover. The first one is, I mean, introduction to workday payroll, which I'm planning to cover or cover tonight's session. Uh, starting from tomorrow, we will get into weeds. I mean, we will go through how we can set up the payroll processing frame framework, how we can define the earnings and deductions, how the calculation engine within Workday works, what we can, I mean, customize or how we can handle the various requirements from payroll standpoint, like FSA, FLSA calculation, shift calculation, all that fun part. Then uh, next module will be the federal state local tax reporting. What is coming out of the box from Workday, what steps we need to do, how we can, I mean, uh, do the tax selection for employees and how we can have the accurate and correct taxation for each individual. The next module is uh, set up payroll accounting, how we can, I mean, set up the charge code, how we can set up the, the general ledger and end up with feeding that to the financials so that we can have all the payroll details feed into the financial system. Then next module will be the setting up a bank and settlement processes so that we will have, I mean, we can go through how we can uh, design our check layout how we can get the settlement process and finally i mean how we can pass on the ach file to the bank so that i mean uh, employees can get the direct deposit deposited post payroll completion and finalization then we can get into the payroll business processes now i will take a pause brief pause here i mean i heard that all of you are having some or a little exposure with workday hcm so uh, can can i mean can you Tell me, what do you mean or what, what is your experience or what, do you, what is your understanding with the business process? When, when I mean the business process comes in workday world, what, what, what I mean uh, click to your mind? I think this I is mean, related to the actions that we have in the SAP side, like hire, hire transfer, terminations and things like that any other any other version or any other understanding about business process well, it's a collection of steps uh, that involve actions approvals notifications based on what the input output point might be for a business process or a business transaction awesome. so those are the behind the scenes governing principles that drive an interaction with the workday application based awesome. on your security. Awesome, awesome. Yep, so I mean, uh, that's the correct definition of business process. Business process is a framework where, I mean, we define how we want to configure the transaction. Like when we are talking about transaction in HCM world, it is called higher transaction. It is called termination transaction, transfer, change of compensation, in uh, time tracking side, I mean, submitting a time uh, on absence side, I would say uh, requesting a time off or requesting a leave of absence. But when it comes to payroll, I mean, the payroll is more of a backbone of any HCM, HR system. So there is not too much of, I mean, self-service transaction pertaining to the payroll, but still we have some business processes. Like, I mean, now, there is a self-service for tax election. So whenever employee want to change their W-4 transact, the W-4 information, there is a business process. Whenever I'm an employee want, or em not employee, but it's more of a, I mean, uh, support, support team. If they want to move the employee from one pay group to another pay group, we have a business process to do that. And this business process, I mean, we, we can customize based on our, our customer's requirement, Normally, I mean, Workday de delivered the business processes as a factory default, but that is what from where we can, I mean, enhance, we can customize and we can make it suitable so that, I mean, it, it suits the customer team, how customer team is supporting individual transaction. And as I mean, uh, we learned that we, we can set up a notification so that after a completion or whenever the step hit to a particular, whenever the business process hit to a particular step, we can set up set up a notification so that i mean whoever be the recipient of that step they can get a notification in their outbox or in workday that they have a action pen they have an action in their inbox which is pending for their act 
depending from the, them to act on it. Again, I mean, not everyone can see those. Security group will come into 4A and by defining a security groups, we can say that, okay, these steps belongs to this security group. So whoever is part of that security group, they can be the recipient of that step, not everyone. So this gives us flexibility. This gives us, I mean, automated workflow for any transaction. And this gives us ability to notify, I mean, the recipient of those trans, the, those actions or those steps within a business process. So great. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that most of you are, have exposure to it. And then finally, we will get into the payroll processing. We will learn that, I mean, how can how we can run the on-cycle business, I mean, on-cycle payroll, off-cycle payroll, uh retro processing all that great stuff so that is going to be our overall uh curriculum throughout the training session we will get into weeds we will get into details of each one of them we will get the hands-on we will have an activity planned on each one of this so that i mean you guys can have your hands on and you can get some practice okay. now let's so i had a question uh yeah, go ahead. So I don't have any exposure to payroll. Um, so do you think uh, this is not the right course for me or something? No, it, I'm not saying that it's it's not a right platform, but I mean, uh, uh, the folks who are, I mean, already have experience with the payroll, they, they can correlate to it. But I mean, in theory, every one of us, I mean, who is, who is working, we know that, I mean, how the payroll work. Payroll is, I mean, it's a processing engine. So it requires an input and then that input is get into that calculation engine that get processed and the final product is in, we, we get paid out of it. And then we get a pay statement. So, so I mean, I would say, I mean, this is a great platform for you to get exposure to payroll. And if you find interested, I mean, you can build your career on it. I mean, it is, it is an exciting world, I would say. I mean, I'm, I'm doing this for the last 16 years and uh, Workday Payroll is very, very user friendly as compared to other legacy uh, ERP system or other legacy HR systems. So the great, I mean, the, the, the selling point for Workday Payroll is that it, it doesn't require, I mean, IT intervention. So it's most of, um, most of the things are plug and play. I, I would say that, I mean, the payroll professional, if, if they understand or they think analytically and they understand the product, they, they can do or they can maintain the product. Okay. Uh, SP, just a quick question. Uh, yeah. I see that uh, you have module eight ending with banking. Uh, yeah. Is there any module which covers, I mean, uh, you know, the generation of W twos and T fours? Uh, I don't think so. But we can uh, briefly talk about it. I mean, we can go through, I mean, I mean year, year which end earning steps codes or, and which deduction codes would go into which boxes. Yes, that, I, I, that I can, I mean, I can, yeah, I, I can cover that. I mean, it, it's okay. not a big deal. I mean, most of them are already pre-populated by Workday. Like I mean, all the uh, taxable wages and all, yeah. all, all that are getting pre-populated. Uh, the yeah. only, only boxes which are 401k or uh, uh, HSA, because I mean, mm -hmm. those are uh, in the, I mean, customer specific. So those right, are not right, something, right. I mean, out of the box delivered one. So mm -hmm. those are the ones, I mean, we, we need to map with the help of, I mean, uh, customer tax team. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we, we can go through it. I mean, it, it's, it's not here, but I mean, throughout the curriculum, it, it is somewhere it is there, but if not, I mean, we, we can cover that. Okay. So question, uh, different question. Um, how many module there are there in uh, Workday? I see that Workday for finance and supply chain, Workday for HR and payroll, which one is this one? Then there's Workday's foundation data model. Then there's Workday reporting. So I, I, I took a class of uh, like Workday integration and the studio. What is that uh, module falls under? So Workday Studio and integration is a technical part, a technical side of the product. So I mean, it is not, so let, let me get, let me take a step back. So Workday is having 
on on high level umbrella workday is having two products workday hcm and workday finance now workday hcm is having sub products like workday hcm workday payroll workday time tracking workday absence workday compensation workday benefit workday learning workday recruiting workday ta- talent and performance similarly on finance side you have supply chain you have uh expense you have uh, uh what you call accounts uh i mean booking and all that and then technical is technical i mean platform or technical stream is what is cutting across both the module i mean both the high level i mean product umbrellas so studio i mean when we talk about payroll let's assume that i mean our customer is a global customer and uh, right now workday is giving payroll or workday payroll product is available just for four country usa canada france and uk now if i have my customer they have i mean uh, their existence outside these four countries then i need to lean on to some third party payroll provider like adp or nga now in order to i mean interact and uh, interact with this other payroll providers i will need a uh, integration or a interface and that integration or interface is comes comes under that uh, workday studio or workday integration stream so it is more of a true it it function in old older day before uh, cloud does i answer your question so will that be yeah. even applicable for uh, uh, downstream upstream integrations like benefits current providers yep. so all so of them are controlled through that module then yep that that is okay. and again i will not call that as a module because i mean it it's a wider it's like a, Yeah, it's a wider layer of it. I mean, uh, integrations are typically, I mean, uh, coming across every single module. Like, I mean, you gave the example. If the benefit is not in workday, then there will be a inbound and outbound to benefit provider. If, uh, for example, if so, I mean expense is not in workday, then we have an integration going inbound and outbound to the expense system. So it depends. I mean, it it changes from customer to customer. what i mean what our customer is actually taking advantage of workday versus what they want to keep as a third party system but yes integration is something i mean that is inevitable and that that stand and that is the biggest work stream in every project yeah. because it go, it it talks to identity management it talks to your uh, leave administration it talks to your benefit it talks to i mean uh, state new hire reporting kind of a stuff so it it's pretty important i mean it it is the widest scope in uh, every single project i worked till date mm mm-hmm. and I, let's talk specifically about payroll i mean in payroll uh, yeah. all quarterly quarterly tax filing i mean year to date year end processing Mm-hmm. all all this i mean ach all these are nothing but integrations because okay. i mean we are processing payroll we de- did the settlement now post settlement there will be an ach integration which will pull the data out and send to the bank so that right. bank will know that what amount need to be deposited into what account similarly i mean the quarterly tax filing if if our customer is not doing that in house and they are taking i mean services of adp or one source virtual then we will have an integration to send this quarterly or uh, yearly tax filing in reports or tax filing integration to them and they can they can uh, file taxes on behalf of our customer some of the customer mm-hmm. i worked i mean they don't want to in house or they don't want to do the check printing in house so that i mean they they take the net pay services from all these vendors and then we end up i mean creating an integration to send this information to to i mean adp or one source virtual and they do the check printing and ach on behalf of customer so again it depends on i mean what kind of a services your customer are going to opt if they are doing everything in house there will be will be a lesser integration but still the integration will stay because we need to interact with bank we need to interact with treasury we need to interact with uh, tax department all that so sp one quick question i mean mm-hmm. 
in regards to the modules payroll modules capability can it offer 100% in a on site payroll processing like starting from you know of course data entry to third party garnishments and check printing and w2s and posting every single thing and can it support it all of them, those four it countries does. that they are you know yeah it, it does it does okay but again as i said it depends on customer team size how much they want to put in house versus i mean they want to outsource and then again i mean the cost plays important role uh, keeping i mean those uh, people in house to processing versus i mean outsourcing so bigger the customer i saw their inclination to keep their payroll in house whereas smaller the customer they they find i mean outsourcing is the better cost effective option right right so sp when you say the workday payroll it is designed for those four countries what to what extent can you set up payroll for the all the remaining countries and where is that end point where you got to transition to an outside system any so part of payroll for- not really uh, for i mean for other countries which are not supported by workday the feature what i mean we can maintain is direct deposit information which workday called payment election and we can have yep that is the only option and then we can we can set up a pay group and then we can have a mapping something called external earning codes where we can uh, have a mapping chart saying that what compensation plan is getting paid under what earning and from there i mean uh, depend on what vendor we are going for global payroll we have a cloud connectors and the cloud connectors are nothing but i mean they are the predefined pre tested uh, template kind of a integration where we don't have much of a flexibility but they are tried and tested so many times and uh, with between worked and that third party vendor that all the necessary payroll functions are covered as part of those uh, cloud connector and the basic setup what we need to do to support the cloud connector and uh, global payroll is that we need to have a employee we need to assign them to payroll we need to have that external earning which is defining that what pay component is getting getting paid under which earning when whether it comes to time tracking or a absence or a compensation and we need to send a status like employees active employees on leave and then i mean there will be some custom uh, mapping need to be done on an integration layer of that cloud connector and all this information will feed into global payroll provider and from there i mean it, they will they, that that i mean hit their payroll processing engine and then payroll get processed on their side okay Does so what you have sense? on the screen right now uh, mm-hmm. if i were to assume that it follows a sequence from 1 through 9 or 10 1 through 9 yes 2 uh, and 3 can probably at the most be set up for the other countries other than the four and everything else has to be done in an outside system starting so i process. i would so let i mean we need to understand so the module 3 is specifically for payroll uh, supported work day because i mean if we are going for a global payroll or if we are going for a third party payroll system then i mean we don't need to define the earning and deduction calculation rule what just we need is to we need to get the earning and deduction code from third party system and their definition that what where my regular is getting paid so they will give us a earning code saying that okay on our system we call this earning code as reg which is my regular salary and on uh, work day what we will do is that under the external earning mapping we will map that reg earning to the compensation element called salary plan so it's basically a placeholder you're saying it's just a placeholder yes you okay. got it okay got it thank you but but if it is i mean work day supported payroll then we need to define how my regular salary yeah. is going to calculate it how my overtime is going to get calculated my overtime is one one and a half times my regular salary or uh, if flsa is in picture my overtime is one time of my regular salary and my half time will be paid at a premium rate calcul considering the flsa wages and flsa hours so all all that we need to define 
when we are setting up the work day payment. But that stuff is done in the comp modules, right? Not, not specifically. Not. That is not in the comp module. Comp module will do like uh, if it is a car allowance or something like that, then yes. But again, when we go to the design table, we can do the trade-off like, I mean, what we want to do as a calculation on payroll side versus what comp can do on their side. So some of the requirement, yes, comp can do it like... Uh, Let's take an example. I mean, if uh, employee need to pay a car allowance, I mean, if employee get a car allowance and the rule for paying car allowance is 5% of my salary, Com can do that. So Com can set up a calculation on their side so they can grab the salary plan and they can do a calculation by putting 10% or 5% on it. And that amount will come into payroll. But if Com doesn't want to do that, we can do on a payroll. The best or the recommended approach is to do everything at the entry point or at the assignment point. In this, in this case, car allowance is the ownership of compensation. So compensation can do the calculation and feed that calculation to payroll and payroll will process it. But there are some cases where due to the complexity or due to the policy getting implemented later in a stage, I mean, we, we end up, I mean, accommodating that on a payroll side. So it, it is, it is again, I mean, I, I will go back to my statement at a design, we need to determine where we want to put the calculation. We have multiple options, but what is the best op and optimum option from the audit standpoint, from the system maintenance standpoint, and from the complexity standpoint. Okay. Yeah. So SP, I have a couple of questions. Go for it. This is Sridhar. So first one is, um, so when I look at this payroll module, there's a lot that actually feeds into feeds into this from other modules like time. Uh, then you spoke time in attendance. Then you spoke about absence. Uh, HCM, of course, is the baseline. Uh, what am I missing? So let's hold this thought, Sridhar, for a minute. <laughs> So, no, the, the point is, unless we are well-versed with each of these, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure if we can call ourselves payroll consultants, right? You is can, that the way and let me, let me give you something which makes you happy. So just, just okay. hold this thought. Okay. And I so have something to, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I have something to share with group. So okay. that will make and, more sense when I talk about it. Perfect. So give and the me a second, second one I have is, I mean, mm -hmm. because it's a kind of a related question. When you okay. opened this session, you said that Workday is extremely user friendly, especially from the payroll standpoint. And uh, end users with a little bit of analytical bent of mind can actually perform most of the IT functionality. So where are we placed in view of that is my question, second question. So I'm sure you're going to address both. Let me. I'm I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Let me know what I'm in. Yep. Okay. So this is what I mean. I I was talking. I think it was a question from Sean that what product or what modules we have in Workday. So workday called this diagram is typical, typically I mean sunrise diagram because it's a, it's a rising sun in workday world. So this is what we have in workday. It's a enterprise cloud for HR and finance. Now, if I go from here, I mean, I, if I go from the left to right, you can see that time tracking is time tracking, payroll, recruiting, talent, HCM, financial, revenue, procurement, expense and big data and there are more but i mean these are the basic building blocks payroll is having a dependency on uh, multiple modules we will look into that later stage and then i mean uh, design for the way the people work because i mean workday is investing huge amount of time and effort on ui so every single rising i mean when we when you get a complete uh, i mean when you get accustomed to workday and when you start working more and more into workday, 
Workday is having, I mean, two annual conferences. One is for uh, partners or consultant like me, and one is for customer. So the one is called Altitude, which is more for a consultant or an implementer or a partner consultants. And Rising is for customer. So Workday, every single year, Workday hosts these two conferences, which is kind of, I mean, four-day activity. And then uh, people go and present their solution, work day, I mean, customer go and they, they present their case studies or their problem or a pain points. And they, they I mean, uh, collaborate with other customers or I mean, similar industry and they, they talk, I mean. So this is more of a meet and greet kind of a, a platform what Workday provides. And every single time when I went there, I mean, the common theme I heard from Workday leadership is that they are investing hugely in, in user interface. And if you compare with SAP or a PeopleSoft or any other legacy system, Workday user interface is, I mean, 10 times ahead of what we are seeing in SAP or PeopleSoft. So that is why I'm saying that, I mean, Workday is so user-friendly that, I mean, initially it takes a time to get into it because, I mean, we work so many years into the legacy work, legacy system where we are accustomed for a structured navigation. Here, there is no structured navigation. You can just type in like Google search bar and you can you can get it. The only flip side of it is you need to remember the task or you need to remember the keyword to pull that task out. We will, I mean, we will go into it when we start working into tenant, but that is what I want to show. And then across each one of this module, as integration is the common platform for building integration, similarly, there is a common platform for reporting. So you can build report, you can, I mean, have multiple kind of a reporting type, like advanced report, which is similar to our query, writing select start from database and pull the data out, or a matrix report, which is more of, I mean, uh, analytics kind of a report or a composite report where we can combine, I mean, multiple data or a multiple table information at a one place and I mean, project in a more informative way. So again, the most important thing when we talk about payroll, payroll requires reporting. So reporting is another key, but again, the underlying security model is going to respect by reporting as well as integration. So once we define the security model, we, we build the report or we build the integration. Whatever access person is having, they will see only that. No matter what we are, I mean, looking that in information in payroll or in report or in integration. So this is a power of one because all the modules, all the systems, they are sitting on one common platform. So there is absolutely no delay. In SAP, if I am entering a time, I need to run the time evaluation. After my time evaluation gets complete, then only my time will be available for payroll to pick up. Similarly, in PeopleSoft, I need to run a batch process to, to move the time from reported time to payable time, and then only payroll will pick the thing. In Workday Payroll, employee, employee submit their timesheet, manager approves their timesheet. As soon as manager approves timesheet, and if I'm recalculating my Workday Payroll, the time will be picked up and get processed and get paid to employ. So this is, I mean, seamless. This is seamless from entry, data entry point at various modules to the payroll. The only key thing is that we need to keep in mind or we need to educate customer that there is no lock or there is no gate which stops the transaction flowing into payroll. So when we are talking with customer or when we are sitting with customer and part of our discovery, we have, I mean, a couple of hours slated to understand and form a payroll checklist with them. Payroll checklist is, I mean, common in every single payroll department. No matter what, what system they are using, they stick to the payroll, I mean, checklist and they go by that. I, I will, I mean, talk to payroll checklist later in our today's session, but that is one of the, I mean, key point. Now let's go to next slide. Yep. So this is either what I mean, interaction diagram. I called this as an inter interaction diagram. So it, it is small. And uh, I mean, we will share this with you. It is, uh, or, or you can pull that on community. Uh, if 
anyone i mean if you have community access and if you search for uh, payroll touch point you will get this diagram so this diagram is very rigorous now all these small bubbles around the payroll they are the modules and in in the middle we have a payroll now all this diagram which are going in and out will show that what is coming into payroll and what is going out of the payroll to each one of this module so let's talk about hcm what we are getting from hcm from hcm we are getting workday indicative data now what is workday indicative data from hcm we get worker is active or a terminated or on leave similarly what is the contact detail for worker what is workers work location versus what is workers home location all that information is uh, hosted or that is resides in hcm which comes into payroll if we move on to benefit what we get from benefit all the election open enrollment everything is happening in benefit so benefit is holding that data but for payroll to process all the medical deduction or vision deduction uh, dental deduction adad add all that we need those election and the cost associated to that comes and flow into the payroll so this information is getting that information into payroll engine whereas from payroll engine for aca act we need to send what is the paid number of hours for an employee because payroll is processing paid hours so paid how many hours are getting paid on an employee that will flow into benefit from payroll so this is i mean to and fro interaction for benefit for compensation all the compensation plan assignment is coming into payroll whereas completed payroll activity is going into compensation if compensation requires some kind of auditing that uh, okay on compensation we assigned 250 dollars of car allowance 100 dollars of uh, mobile allowance and 500 dollars of regular salary after payroll complete we can send this information back if compensation want that kind of auditing or if compensation want that information back for any budgetary requirement like i mean on a head count what is the proposed or estimated cost versus what is actual cost so all that budget or workforce planning uh, activities they those require this information so that all that information goes out from payroll based on actuals similarly on absence leave information is going back and forth from payroll from absence to payroll if i mean uh, employees on short term disability so is employee is out on short term disability for 80% or 100% or a 60% or no pay so on to tell payroll that what to pay while employee is out on short term disability we need to put employee on that particular kind of a leave type which is which which payroll can read and based on that read payroll can on payroll side on an earning we will have a calculation engine and that calculation engine will spit out what to pay similarly on time tracking what hours are reported by employee how many of them are regular hour how many of them are shift premium hour how many of them are overtime hour how many of them are double time hour all that information comes from time tracking into payroll similarly for projects i mean if a customer implemented a psa that is projects uh then i mean the project project task and for uh, for each task how many hours are estimated how many of them are getting reported and then how all that information so basically i mean project is not having direct interaction with payroll projects are having direct interaction with time tracking the way we do in our it world we work for a project each project is break break into multiple tasks each task is breaked into multiple sub tasks and sub task are having i mean weightage like how many hours for each resource on that sub task and then when we go and submit our time sheet we pick that task and we submit our hours so all that information i mean ma maintained at project reported at time tracking and then from time tracking it goes to payroll for paying it out and in terms of banking and settlement we will have a funding bank and we will have i mean employee banks so that is what i mean we mean by banking mm -hmm. and settlement so we need to fund payroll at the same time we need to deposit amount into the employees bank accounts 
and then finally is the financial accounting so whatever i mean uh, chart chart fields or whatever gl accounts we we maintained at payroll we send that information to finance so that they can book it so this is i mean one diagram which shows interaction with all the modules with respect to payroll make sense reader uh yeah yes we thank you okay now let's go so when we when we look at workday payroll uh, i mean i multiple time i said how different workday payroll is one thing i mean it is seamless i i can define earnings or a deduction and they are not specific to country or they are not specific to uh company so let's take an example for regular salary now i have a employee uh, base in canada as well as in uh, united states i don't want to i mean maintain two earning codes called regular unless my design required that i can set up only one plan salary plan on a compensation side and i can set up only one earning code called regular salary on payroll side and that will work for canada and usa both there is no need for me to define two earning code for for doing exact same same i mean function and as i said i mean it's a unified system so there there is a power of one whenever we do a transaction in one one module it it seamlessly flow into payroll there is no batch process or there is no lag of making that data available for payroll to consume and process now this is i mean this diagram typically show the the cycle or power of one like i mean how the data progress and finally reach to the payroll so if we get start with i mean employee comes into system so whenever i mean employee comes into the system there is a position opened against that position multiple candidate they apply for it out of those candidate i mean one of them get offer and when employee accept i mean when candidate of accept that offer employee gets higher so that is the first time employee gets into our hr system now employee gets into our hr system personal data employee will update their personal data or whatever personal data information employee already entered while employee was a candidate that is available so it is not like i mean when i fill out my form as a candidate in workday system i put some information and that vanishes and when i i get into hire i need to redo again no the information will be available but not but i mean when i was candidate there is no need for me to share my social there is no need for me to share some other i mean like a uh, ethnicity or a gender or a citizenship information if that is optional i mean i don't want to share but when i i am employee now if i want to share i can go and i can edit my personal data so as a part of onboarding checklist update of personal data is one of the key task after my personal data is entered my work location my home location that is now in the system so that tells the payroll that what is my work state what is my home state so for taxation these two important parameters are now in the system for payroll now let's go to now employee got hired over a period of time employee got some job changes maybe it's a location change if it is a location change out of state yes it is it is having a direct impact on payroll if it is a location change if we are talking about the state of pennsylvania where we have a local uh, taxation a lot then uh, yes we have that if job change requires a compensation change that has impact on payroll if job change requires uh, compensation uh, i mean going from full time to part time or part time to full time yes that has impact on payroll life event if employee is having any life event birth of a new child which requires benefit to be revised if uh, employee is going on short term disability or long term disability or coming back from both of them they have a benefit revision that has impact on payroll if employee is going on leave that has impact on payroll if employee is having a compensation change outside the promotion demotion or uh, part time full time if they are getting new allowances if uh, for example in in world i mean in in age of covid all the retail or like a instacart or other people they raised the hourly rate they gave some premium pay they they introduced some shift premium rates 
So all those compensation change, they have a direct impact on payroll. And finally, time tracking, whenever employee enter time, that has to be consumed and processed by payroll. So this shows the whole cycle, which I mean, employee goes every single day, every single pay period, some way or the other. Okay. Now, if I want to summarize, how what is workday payroll? First thing I will say, it's a modern solution. The reason why I'm saying it's a modern solution because it's a more intuitive, it is more user-friendly, it requires less of a programming, it requires less of a IT intervention. What it gives me, other than I mean giving all these good features, it has the powerful calc engine, which is similar or which is uh, at par with any other legacy system like SAP or PeopleSoft or LT Pro or ADP. It is configurable. So based on my requirement, I can configure the thing. Accounting and audit agility. It, it gives me configurability to, I mean, account or audit at granular level to the top level. Again, it depends on requirement of a customer. Actionable reporting. I can do the reporting on it. And when I do the reporting, I mean, there is actionable items because everything is sitting or residing in one cloud platform. But let's take, I mean, I will take a simple example. If I want to write a report to, let's take an example of payroll register. I mean, who all are having experience with payroll register? Payroll register is, I mean, nothing but it's a dump of a uh, payroll cycle. So if, if comp, I mean, if my customer run a payroll from uh, May, May, for, May 15 to May 31st, and when they close, I can run the payroll register and that payroll register will give me all the employees, what I paid to them, what I deducted from them, what I taxed to them, and what is their net, what is their gross, all that information. If I want to write a report to just grab that, okay, what is my employee ID? What is my employee's name? What is uh, pre-tax deduction? What is post-tax deduction? What is net? What is gross and all that? I, I can write that report. At the same time, if I want to, from the same place, if I see that, okay, there are no taxes coming out. In other ERP, if there are no taxes coming out, the way to navigate is you need to, I mean, open an employee in SAP world. You need to type in info type 210 and you need to go or 210 or 207 or 208. And you need to open that and see that, oh, employees exempt from any kind of a tax or not. But in Workday, from then and there, you can click on it. It will drill through that payroll re result. And in that payroll result, there will be a tab which says that, okay, these are my tax selection at the time of this, re this result got processed. So you, you can have a drillable ability. So that is, that is very cool functionality. I mean, that is definitely a win-win on any of the legacy software in HR. And it is unified with HCM. As I said, I mean, there is no lag. Everything is so tightly packed. You complete the transaction at one module. It is readily available for payroll to process. So I will I will take a pause because I went through a lot. So any question or anything which is unclear up till this point. So uh, SP, you said it is readily available. Mm -hmm. So while uh, in SAP, uh, your, when, when the payroll cycle has been started, um, the uh, you cannot make any changes in other areas, right? In the info types. Correct. Correct. Now, how, how does that work in uh, Workday? So that is what I mean. I will I will go back to my discussion when I was talking about the payroll checklist. This is okay. I mean, all of the customer who are coming from SAP or who are coming from Pay PeopleSoft, they found this as a disadvantage because I mean okay. we don't have a control. In in right. uh, field, people are doing, I mean, transaction left and right. We mm -hmm. don't have any clue what people are, I mean, what other sub, upper, other department are doing. Correct. But the key part is that when you start your payroll, let's take an example that, okay, my payroll cutoff. And again, I will go back to my checklist saying that, okay, if I'm running a biweekly payroll, every, I mean, assume that every Friday is my payday. And I need to send my ACH 48 hours before my payment date. So on Wednesday, I need to send my ACH no matter what by 12 p.m. Because I need to backtrack, right? Whenever I am creating my checklist, 
I need to backtrack. When bank is expecting my SES to come? Okay, 48 hours before the pay date. Now pay date is Friday. I need to send my ACH on Wednesday, 12, 12 noon. Now from 12 noon, I can take step back. What or how many days payroll team need to process the payroll? Assume that they need three days. Okay. So Wednesday, half a day, Tuesday and Monday. So two and a half days, they need to process their payroll. So we will say to all other department, don't do any transaction after Friday evening. Okay. We are educating them. But if they don't do that, if they don't follow that and they keep doing it, that will not get processed in current payroll because payroll team will run their pre-calc in all the world or in work, work day term, I will call first payroll calculation on Friday mm -hmm. evening. And when they run their Friday evening, they are assuming that as per the checklist, payroll benefit, I mean, sorry, compensation, benefit, HR, time, absence, all of them did their due diligence and they perform all their audit and all the transactions are in the system. So they run their process and all the transactions are in. As long as payroll team are not again going back and recalculating all, whatever people are doing out other, I mean, after Friday evening, nothing will be considered or nothing will be calculated. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Again, so there is a control but, there. There is case. a, there, I mean, it, it's not a hard control. It's more of an understanding control. It's a perspective. I mean, all the customer who are on SAP, I mean, they feel that this is a disadvantage because they don't trust people. The, yeah. the method or, or the theme of workday is empowering people. I mean, they don't want, I mean, centralized control. The, if you, I mean, see the workday as a product, they are empowering people. They are saying people, okay, do your job, but when you are getting power of doing it, you have a responsibility of doing it right. Okay. And, and again, we are not locking them. They are open to do it, but it doesn't mean that, okay, payroll is having a clear cut laid down process. I mean, payroll doesn't care. Like, I mean, if they, they run their pre-calc or if they run their first calc and they are, I mean, the calculation is good enough. They are fully confident on it. Don't recalculate all. Just recalculate in case if compensation say, oh, so I, we are, I mean, we are processing annual bonus in this pay cycle, but because of, I mean, lot of work or because of rework, we are not able to complete our transaction by Friday. So in payroll calculation, and we will look into it, there is an ability just to recalculate for a particular transactions. So I can pick and choose. I want to recalculate for everyone, every transaction, or I want to recalculate just for compensation changes. Make sense? Yeah. So that, that is how I mean, we, we can uh, have a control. And again, I will reiterate my point. The defining clear cut, cut payroll checklist is the key for success. If payroll checklist is clear cut laid down, that is the success for customer. Any other question before we move forward? Let's go again. I mean, we, we talked about it, but I have a slide so that, I mean, it can, it can, it can depict how workday payroll. I mean, how workday as a product support, uh, payrolls, which are supported by workday versus, uh, the payroll, which are not supported by workday and, uh, send data through cloud connect to third party payroll system. So in this diagram, if you see, I mean, we have payroll for by workday for us, Canada, UK, France. And then we have a cloud connect for pretty much every single country. Now the cloud connect for every single country work in little different, different type, I would say. So Workday is having their own, I mean, their trusted partners like NGA, ADP. Then uh, they have, uh, within ADP, there are multiple products. One is ADP Global View, one is uh, ADP Streamlined, and one is ADP... Hmm, Selegro, they, they just bought the Selegro, which is more of an international assignment payroll earlier, but now, I mean, it is, it is a full-fledged payroll platform. And then uh, they have uh, Eon Hewitt, 
uh, one of the provider. So what does Cloud Connect do? Like NGA, NGA is having Cloud Connect between customer workday and their, their cloud. From customer workday, they fetch the information, they put at one place, which they called as a payroll aggreg aggregator. So this payroll aggregator site is having information for all the countries uh, in that region. And then from there, they fed this information to local provider. Because I mean, uh, in Europe, there are so many countries. NGA is not running payroll for every single countries because I mean, it is not cost effective for them to run a payroll for 12, people, 12 employee or 15 employee. But the local payroll provider, they, they may run their uh, payroll on a software or on a spreadsheet, but they get the data from NGA and they process the payroll as a payroll to their payroll to the employee. So there are multiple handshakes happening. Again, it depends on how and what type of I mean uh, services a customer is engaging with NGA or ADP, and then from there, I mean, uh, what is the employee base in each one of this country? So it's it's little complex, but I mean, this is how it comes into forest. So uh, I feel I mean. Uh, this is important for from project management standpoint to understand that how the global payroll works or how the global payroll arrangement actually works in real time. Uh, Gurminder, does, does this answer, I mean, your question, which you had early, earlier? Yeah, it does for sure. Um, just curious that, uh, Workday doesn't have Cloud Connect with ADP workforce now for US population, but they do for uh, global population. That's kind of interesting, right? Because they see ADP as a rival here, but they probably have to build the this cloud ADP, ADP, they have global view because uh, three months ago, I mean, last year, I, I worked on a project, I mean, where we sent the data from Workday to ADP global view for US and Canada. Oh, interesting, because we did an integration with Workforce Now about a year ago, and we had all kinds of issues, and nobody would uh, help us troubleshoot, either on the ADP side or Workday, but that must be recent. Yeah, it, it is experience. recent. I think the global view for US is pretty new. I mean, they, they just roll out, and uh, again, I mean, personally, I don't feel that's a great option, but I mean, that is how our customer want to go through. So we, we just implemented, I mean, last year. Oh, cool. That's yeah. good to know. Thank you. I think Global View is uh, on the SAP platform, right? It is. It is on SAP. Yeah. Uh, so, is there any plan on Workday side to move into other countries apart from? It is. I mean, they, they are considering, but I think, I mean, payroll is uh, very complex. So, they are taking uh, small steps, to be honest. Because, I mean, if we go with the PeopleSoft uh, methodology, because, I mean, the mind behind Workday is same as what in PeopleSoft. In PeopleSoft also, I mean, they roll out slowly, slowly. Uh, over a span of, I mean, 15, 16 years, they roll out payroll for, uh, I mean, US and then they, they, I mean, roll out global payroll. So Workday is also, I mean, working towards global payroll uh, platform, which is kind of, I mean, uh, configurable for all countries. And then... Uh, for taxation, I, I think that, I mean, they are advocating at this point of time to do outsourcing on taxation. So, I mean, the definitely the work is in progress, but uh, not yet, I mean, materialized or not yet on the roadmap. But they are definitely, I mean, working towards global payroll. So it's common, kind of a common platform where, I mean, we can, we can define our earnings deduction, but uh, the tax are the sticking point. Okay, so so they are not really looking at and they, they are not actively looking at and uh, more to come because I mean two years back when I was in altitude I heard about it but after that I mean nothing uh, come across or nothing I heard but it's a good point I mean maybe I will I will reach out to payroll product managers and uh, see if there is any work still going on or they. I mean, scrap that idea because I mean, this cloud connector is working very nicely. So maybe that is the reason we are not seeing anything. Okay. okay.
now let's talk about our favorite uh, i'm my favorite topic payroll checklist so i mean payroll checklist there are two options we can we can administer or we can uh, configure this so workday give one ability which they call pay cycle event business process so this pay cycle event business process is nothing but to configure this business process and embed every single task which you have on your payroll checklist so i would say in typical world how the payroll start so payroll start checking that all the ad hoc payroll inputs are in in sap world info type 14 and 15 those are in all my time information is in in sap world that is 2010 all my compensations are in in sap world that is i believe uh, info type 8 or 6 6 and 8 i believe all my shift in for shift diff premiums they are in all my hr transactions are in and and for each one of this we can have a separate step so we can have a step we can put the recipient on that as the benefit if it is benefit pertaining we can put the benefit partner if it is comp pertaining we can call it comp partner or i mean if we have a corresponding poc on our payroll side we can put their name so that each one of this will flow in a system so we can have instead of i mean maintaining that payroll checklist on spreadsheet outside the system we will have this we will have this i mean business process configure and then it will go as a workflow from one point to another point and uh, i i have a url from community if you want to read more about this business process i mean we can briefly go over it when we conduct i mean when we go into our uh, uh, sessions but uh, this is a great i mean information which which definitely i mean i personally feel that customer should leverage this but again it depends that i mean if there are multiple actions or multiple people are doing same task simultaneously or multiple tasks simultaneously sometimes i don't feel i mean this is any value addition for customer but again we we need to take our call when we are designing solution for customer and this is typical checklist what payroll group or payroll department maintained within their group so this is on the same thing but on spreadsheet now let's talk briefly about security as i said i mean security is the key underlying layer uh, throughout the product who can see what who can act on what and who can perform what action so if we see i mean three people like ben adams enrique and logan so logan is i mean payroll associate role enrique is in manager role and ben is in, uh, is he is an employee so ben will have just employee as self access enrique will have manager access and logan will have more of a administrator access now when it comes to view paycheck ben can see his check paycheck enrique can see his again it depends if we want manager to see the paycheck of their direct report is we can do that but that is not i mean advisable and that is not how the how we set up in a field so enrique will not see the paycheck in terms of withholding again ben can see his ben can see his time when it comes to approve time ben cannot approve his time similarly logan cannot approve if logan is an administrator for time also yes logan can approve time for ben but enrique will definitely have approve access to uh, approve the time for ben because ben is reporting to enrique when we go into logan what logan can see logan can run payroll logan can see the payroll results not just for herself but for ben or enrique because she is the payroll associate supporting the payroll for a pay group in which ben and enrique resides so three people based on what role they are doing they can see the information they should see and they can perform the action they should perform any thoughts or any question before we move move past this Let's go. 
Now, workday payroll basic structure. Now, let's start getting into weeds of payroll. So, what pay group is and what is not? I mean, again, it, it differs a little bit from uh, SAP or pay, people's of days, where I mean, pay group is tied to company. If I have three companies, I need to have a payroll pay group, com company pay group combination, which is unique. But in workday, that is not the case. In workday, the pay group, when we are defining how many pay groups I want or how many pay groups we should have, the basic question we should answer is pay group is a mechanism to group the people so that we can process their payroll, uh, payroll as a group. Now, in order to group the people, there are multiple criteria. One, they belong to one company. They are exempt or non-exempt. They are different by grade or they are getting paid by different pay frequency. The most important is when we are creating a pay group, we need to see that the first criteria in my mind, which I always follow is the pay frequency. If I have a weekly pay, 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 pay frequency, I have a monthly and I have a semi-monthly. Straight away in my mind, I need three pay groups. I need to group people who are getting paid weekly. I need to group people who are paid uh, bi-weekly and I need to group people who are getting paid monthly. Now on a pay frequency, is there any differentiator? Like, I mean, my weekly people, they cut across four companies. Now, four companies are not supported by same person or same group, but they are supported by different pay groups. And one pay, the, the people who are supporting one pay, uh, sorry, the people who are supporting one company, they cannot see the data for another company. If that is my requirement, okay, I need a pay, separate pay group for one company and I, I can club people from three companies into one pay group because that is what my security says but if that is not the case i just need one weekly pay group where i can put all my uh, employees from four company so all all these are i mean the basic question we need to go through and then as i said pay group are independent it's just a mechanism to group the people how we want to process them it is not so driven by yeah go ahead if you started uh, your payroll setup with, say, one pay group weekly, and then at a later date, the, the client decided to go either add a pay group, which is biweekly, or just convert the entire population to biweekly, what are the implications other than just making this change on the payroll side that you have to be aware of on the HCM or uh, any other side of the, the business? So HCM How complex does, does it get? Yeah, so on HCM, we just need to know because I mean, as I said, assigned pay group is a sub process of hire. So we need to tell uh, people on HCM side, whenever they are hiring someone, they need to hire in new pay group. Now, when it comes to payroll, we need to be sure that when we are making this switch, like, I mean, we are converting now our payroll from weekly to bi-weekly. We can do that. There is no nothing which is stopping us. We can complete the last weekly pay period and then we can have a new pay group called biweekly. And under that biweekly pay group, we will, uh, uh, we will uh, attach a period scheduled or a pay frequency scheduled of biweekly. And we are done. But while doing that, the one, one conversion, which is a mass conversion we need to do is, we need to pull employees from old pay group to new pay group. So we will have them process on our next payroll cycle. Or when employees moving, I mean, as a part of their career progression, if they are moving from, I mean, more of a blue collar job to white collar job, which results them moving from weekly to biweekly. In that case, whenever that promotion transaction is going to be processed under a change job, the HR partner or HR administrator or manager who is performing that promotion transaction, they will change employee from weekly to biweekly and automatically employee will get start process, get, getting processed under the biweekly payroll. Now, again, as I said, payroll pay group should not be derived from FEIN, like I'm in company, and they should not be derived from pay type, like a salary or hourly. Just in case, if 
I mean, customer still, I mean, customer insists and they said, okay, we want to differentiate them because they are getting paid on a different pay cycle, pay cycle, or they are, I mean, uh, because the hourly people, they are either getting paid in uh, lag because I mean, in most of the cases we saw that, I mean, their time tracking is getting reported and that time is not getting pulled or not getting paid on current. They are getting paid with a lag of one one week or two weeks. If that's the case, then yes, we need to differentiate the salary people and hourly people into different pay groups. But other than that, I mean, minimum the pay group, better it is. Again, uh, that is one of the criteria. But again, when we are talking about, I mean, customer with a size of 80,000 employees, we, we cannot have all 80,000 sitting in one pay group because then it will run, it will run the process forever. Unfortunately, there, there is no parallel processing at this moment. So we need to create pay groups into slices so that we are not clogging the system or we are not, I mean, uh, uh, putting too much, uh, too much burden on system. So it, it's kind of, I mean, uh, decision we need to make that what is our optimum size of employees to be in pay group. Because I mean, two years, Ago, I implemented one uh, uh, customer, their size was 44,000 and the way they were, I mean, uh, paying out or the nature of their grouping, I, I could done that with two pay groups, but putting two pay groups, 44,000 employees, I mean, it, the payroll run forever. It took three, three hours or more than three hours to just calculate. So we end up, I mean, dividing into th four pay groups to run those four, four pay groups in a parallel and get some cost, get some time advantage or efficiency. So that is, again, keep that thing in mind when you use, I mean, uh, design how you want your pay group to be look like or how you want to group your people into pay group. So the, these are, I mean, all, all tricks which you learn when you start working with Workday and payroll product. So it, it will tell you, I mean, it from community you can community is a great resource by the way i mean I, I didn't emphasize too much on it but community is the great resource you just type in your query or question and more i mean 80 percent times you will get the answer the people who are in field they come across the same situation same problem you will find a solution you will find a configuration what they did and uh, i i would say i mean do the same because i mean if you come across some problem and you found the solution just post on community so that others can get advantage out of it so there is no point in reinventing a wheel go on community search it if you are not able to get on your own first place to go is to search on community that is how we do that is how everyone do in work ecosystem okay. Additionally, I mean, pay group is a key parameter. If we want to, I mean, uh, build our eligibility on pay group. Like if, if I want, if my earning is having like, the earning is specific to salaried people. I mean, the one way of me building that eligibility is I can look into the pay rate type and I can build the, uh, my eligibility rule. Or I can go and say, if my pay group are differentiated by pay rate type, I, I can build on pay group. Saying that if my pay group is uh, uh, non-exempt, Employee is not eligible for this earning. If my pay group is exempt, employee is eligible for this earning. So all, all that, I mean, will come into play when we start building eligibility and calculation. Group. So all this, I mean, the data attribute or data points, they are available to build our eligibility and calculations. Okay. Now, Workday engine different from core. Setup, in legacy, it is kind of a rigid because, I mean, uh, we we don't uh, make it configurable or there is no configure configuration ability if we want to do any customization we need to build i mean either a new table new page or all that new i mean the customization in workday payroll because we cannot i mean create anything either the only way is to create a creative configuration more or less we can achieve most of them but where we are not able to achieve, either we need to make a process change or we can have some kind of a manual intervention in that. But uh, for last eight years, I have been with in Workday ecosystem and implementing Workday payroll. I come across only 10% of the cases 
where we are not able to accomplish the requirement into workday payroll. And I can say, I mean, the most of the times where we say, oh, we cannot do it is the cases where, I mean, SAP time evaluation is doing some incredible calculations, which unfortunately time, workday time tracking is not mature enough to handle it. Now taxes, it's more of a hierarchical, separate by company code, separate by groups or cost center or by FEIN. In case of workday, earning deduction set up for all the organization or for the FEIN or for the country. So it is, it is easy. It just required one version of a definition and we can enable that one version of earning to multiple countries. New rules, there is no visibility how the tax updates are coming into system or how the information is, how the new rules are getting implemented on legacy side. Whereas in Workday, we will see the vis visibility in terms of, I mean, if there is a new tax authority, if there are new taxes are coming up, we can, we can see that. But this statement is little misleading because I mean, uh, last, I think in my last project, when we were doing a pay parallel, we come across one situation where in SAP, we can go and we can see that what is on Canada side specifically. We can go and we can see that what are the tax slabs and how the tax are getting calculated based on slabs. Whereas in Workday, that routine is not exposed to users. So that I learned. So I will, I will not 100%, uh, I'm, I'm not going to defend this statement, but still, I mean, in 99% of the times, Workday is giving us more visibility than legacy systems. this is what i have and so before i mean we get into our first module or get start with the first module any question or any thought which is in your mind you want to clarify before we start getting into uh, our training I will take silence as golden. Let me get start with module one, which is introduction to payroll. We already talked to some of them. Now introduction to workday payroll. Workday payroll enable the user to pay cor cor correctly, flawlessly and to the total workforce. Delivers in cloud, no matter what, where you are. It combines the flexibility, control, and insight. That is customization. Streamline and manage the entire payroll process. It allows us to have a third-party payroll integration. We briefly talked about or we talked about each one of this in detail. What Workday Payroll brings to the table, what we can do with Workday Payroll, where Workday Payroll is not there, how we can interact with third-party system, and how we can, I mean, interact with uh, core connectors to send the payroll, in order to get the employee paid correctly. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show the tenant, but we will talk about it today. And in tomorrow's class, we will directly go into workday tenant and we will, I will show you how and where we can set this up. So configuring tenant setup is something, I mean, it's a basic step. So whoever worked on HCM side, we have a similar task called configure tenant setup for HCM configure tenant setup for system. So all the, I mean, customer logo, banner, uh, welcome message, all that we set it up on system side. Similarly on HCM side, we set it up that, okay, I want, I, at, for what country we need to maintain the personal name, for what country we are enabling our product, for what, can, what will be the local scripting uh, handled on uh, country side, all, all that, I mean, handling HCM side of a tenant setup. Similarly, we have a tenant setup for payroll. Now on payroll tenant setup, what we can do? Let me make it in a present mode. SP, excuse me. Uh, oh, are you intending yeah, to I, share a different slide deck? Yes, yes, I need to. I, I just realized that I'm not sharing that. No I apologize for that. Let me know when you see this. Yeah, I can see it now. Okay, perfect. So this is, I mean... There are seven or eight tasks which we can handle or which we can maintain 
under a tenant setup so the first task is what countries we are selecting so there are four countries for which workday payroll is uh, available so first we can define that okay for what what workday payroll product i am going to enable so if i am enabling for implementing for usa i will just pick usa if i am implementing for usa and canada i will pick both if i am implementing for four countries i will pick four all four this is very important because i mean this has separate a sku for each one of this workday payroll for us is a separate sku workday payroll for canada is a separate sku similarly for uk and uh, france so based on what the contracting arrangement is what the project scope is what our sow says we need to select the country second is enabling mid period costing so this is more of a labor costing function so mid period costing if we enable this uh, option of enabling mid period costing this makes the proration happen if employee changes the compensation in middle of the pay period by default so let's take an example if i am uh, i am having a position with 100k as my annual salary and i am on uh, semi monthly payroll so 100k divided by 24 is what my uh, regular salary for pay period now i did a splendid job and i got a promotion in middle of my pay period which moved me from 100 to 120 now if this check box is not enabled what will happen birthday by default takes my salary or annual comp as of period and date and that will be considered as my labor costing but enabling this will split my costing into two portion till the promotion and after the promotion so i this option will give the more accurate costing uh, when when it comes to sending that labor costing to workforce planning or to accounting okay the third check box again it's a check box yes or no kind of a field binary field by checking it, it we are telling system that if we are processing a off cycle and if my off cycle is having a payment date associated to it uh, i'm sorry uh, sp just want to step back can you tell yeah. i'm so sorry for this no no can you tell me an example where exactly you would not enable a mid period costing is there uh, any scenario no i i don't think of anything and i is a best practice i always say my customer to enable this right so that's why i'm i'm wondering why they have even that choice So when, this this is I I believe I mean they this was not there in the beginning and they roll out this in uh, version twenty four or twenty five I'm not sure yeah. I need to dig a little bit and the reason why they they <sighs> kept it as a optional because mm-hmm. I mean they don't want to jeopardize or they don't don't want to screw up anything with the customer who are already live so whenever I mean workday workday releases something they mm-hmm. always say. i mean they said that okay this is what the feature is it's an optional because if you turn it on it will have a implication on your usual uh, processing because let's take an example like i mean flextronics who are having 100000 employees on work day and this feature was not there so they must have uh, i mean they must have built some manual process for accurate costing and all of a sudden if work day without letting them know enable this that may not match what they are doing in today so enabling this particular option will actually provide will save uh, their accurate time. Yeah. Uh, accurate correct. costing correct. right correct okay. Okay. that's right okay but the reason why work they said that as a option is because i mean they don't want to just i mean push it without letting the customer know which were live before this function or this feature was yeah uh, i get yeah. that so yeah yeah but okay. but as a default if you go i mean if you go into the tenant and if you doing or setting it up from scratch by default it is always checked makes sense okay. now Thanks. third option or the third third setup point is specifying the accounting data for off cycle payment and so off cycles now i mean you know that off cycles are meant for paying it out which was not which was not paid on on cycle so in 100 i i would say 95% of the times off cycle is for historical periods like i mean i i am not 
I got a red. I mean, I got a promotion, and that promotion is not flowed in a timely manner. And due to some reason, I mean, uh, payroll team doesn't want to process that as a part of retro, retro processing. So what they can do is whatever the difference amount I, they owe me, they will go and they will uh, process off cycle check for me. Now, when they process an off cycle check, if they want to accurately pass that information to accounting. they will put the payment date in uh, payment date in, i mean they, they can put the payment date as of the payment date i am receiving this but the cost is coming or the payment is happening for my previous periods so by checking this we are instructing a system that don't go by the payment date but go by the period end date so if i am getting a payment for my previous quarter and if this checkbox is instructing that when we do our gl the cost will go against the previous quarter not for this quarter so this is something again it change from customer to customer and finance department so whenever we are checking or enabling or disabling this checkbox we need to ensure that finance is in agreement with us if finance is no we don't want to do this whatever we go we want to go by the payment date if the payment date is in this quarter we want to pull the uh, the costing in this quarter then we don't want to enable this checkbox if we if they don't want the other way around we will go and we will enable this checkbox so i think in real world most companies would um, disable this checkbox right because they want usually in the current payment they they want to respect the payment date yes right right okay okay so here in the in the second one they usually enable it in and the third one disable it. disable it okay i'm just trying to make sense of and and we will level. we will see the definition so let's let's okay. go to the definition of this let's so this is the the payroll accounting workday uses the period end as a accounting date in general lines for off cycle payment now you select the use the payment date as the accounting date for the off cycle as i said if the box is unchecked it will take the period end date if the box is checked then it will take the payment date wow <laughs> quite confusing <laughs> i think we get i we, we should get used to this a little yeah bit. You, i mean sometimes the label the label heading is misleading so the label heading if you see it is little misleading the label heading is saying specifying the accounting data for off cycle payment and the and explanation is like this so if it is checked it will respect the payment date if it is unchecked then by default it will respect the period end date of that payment okay. so you are saying both have to be checked right cost both have to be checked yes check both okay. have to be checked perfect now disabling pay slip self service option now pay slip we we can disable or we can enable that whether we want employee can print or view pay slip from self service pages when the payroll self service domain is enabled if self service is enabled i mean ess is enabled why why do we why do we don't want employee to view their pay slip or not to print their pay slip most of the cases this is again a check thing that yes if ess is enabled yes i want my employee to view their pay slip and i want them to print their pay slip no harm in that now when it come to pay slip pay slip uh, again i mean it's more of a integration topic but i would like to touch upon this is that pay slip is a layout how we want to present the information again it depends on what kind of a check stock uh, company or customer is following it is bottom check and uh, i mean top pay slip uh, the pay stub or the bottom top check and bottom pay stub it depends on our pay stock now in earlier to i mean two release ago i believe work day 33 till 33 they were uh, coming with xslt layout which was the pre delivered layout by work day and uh, all the 99% of the times i mean we were end up using that for customers but workday advocated that i mean instead of using that xslt layout which has very limited functionality of designing check or aligning the pay stub they they said that okay go for a bert 
Now, BERT is nothing but it's more of a, another product, which is, uh, I, I'm not able to, I mean, get the full form on top of my head at this point of time. But what BERT do is in old, old days, it is something like a XML publisher where we can create a report and we can create a XML tags and we can send the XML tag and on XML publisher, we can arrange those tags and we can, I mean, define like what will be my first row of data? What will be my second row of data? What will be my third row of data? How I want to group the earning, how, how I want to position my deduction, pre-tax, post-tax, employer paid, employee paid, voluntary deduction, and on check at what position my maker line will be, at what position my amount box will be. Like, I mean, the transparency, what we get, get from the banks. So that, I mean, it will go through the maker, maker text. So with BERT, BERT gives the exact same feature. It, it is, an, I mean, it is a report designer layer where we can uh, have a business form layout defined and then we can use those business form layout to pull the XML tags and then use those XML tags on that report design layer so that we can define the pay stub so that if there is an instance where, I mean, there are 20 earnings on a paycheck. So with Workday defined layout, what was happening is that Workday print the 10 and the other 10 is showed that to be continued. That's it. On pay stub, employee was not able to understand that what other 10, 10 uh, rows of data or what other 10 earnings on my, my check. With BERT, it is a dynamic. So there is a dynamic width adjustment. So if employee is having three, maybe my, my pay stub will fit into one page. But if employee is having 20 earnings or 20 deduction, my pay stub will go on to two pages. So all these flexibilities comes with the BERT. So that is why now Workday is strictly saying that don't set up the check layout or don't set up the pay slip layout with the XSLT, but go for a BERT. And with BERT, they delivered some predefined BERT, BERT templates to use, like I mean, out of the box plug and play. But if they are not useful to you, to you, you can take the exam, I mean, help of an integration consultant and you can write your own BERT layout. Make sense? Okay. Now, the other two, other two options are overriding W2 and W2C form alignment or specifying W2 and W2C electronic signature text. So these are specific to W2, hence they are specific to US. If we are implementing payroll for Canada, UK or France, I mean, we don't want to check this or uncheck this box. We don't care about it. And they will have no impact because we don't have workday payroll for US. But if we have a workday payroll for US, the, the, the way we are checking or unchecking this will have impact. So. If we are checking the override box for W2 or W2C form alignment, then we have an ability to align that from what will be our from where our header will start, from where we, our trailer, trailer will start, what will be our left margin, what will be our right margin. Because I mean, in some cases, again, if we are, I mean, printing W2 in house and we have a different uh, stock paper. So according to the stock paper, we have an option to align our W2 so that it will fit into that paper. Specifying W2 and W2C electronic signature text. Again, if uh, we are not giving ability for employee to, to send a paper copy and employee need to get an electronic copy, we need to check this box. So that, I mean, they can see the electronic text message and electronic signature when they print the W2 electronically. The last option is more of a sequence generator in a workday the garnishment is called withholding withholding order. So whenever you hear withholding order, it is nothing but the garnishment. So this is a sequence generator. We set it up for uh, garnishment. So whenever we are, I mean, uh, entering garnishment order, it will sequentially assign the garnishment order one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. So this is what we have. And that uh, garnishment sequence order is by employee or across the system? It is across the system. Okay. 
so we are almost on top of the hour i will conclude my session here and then we will start getting into configuring tenant i mean we will first look into the uh, tenant setup and then we will start with payroll processing framework before we conclude today's session any question any doubt or anything you want to discuss I mean, not about the subject matter, but I have a general question. So what is the time for the session every day? Uh, and how long is it? Uh, it, it is from 8.30 Central, and it will be for 1 hour 45 minutes. Perfect. Okay. There are no questions. We can end our today's session. Thanks. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. And have a good night and I will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below and we will reply to them at the earliest.